Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create a caricature like the one you see here and we're going to be using a tool that's basically the equivalent to the liquefied tool found in Photoshop and that is what is called the Warp Transform tool here in GIMP 2.10.6. This is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course, before we get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, as well as Project Translate, where you can help us translate our videos. You can watch one of our GIMP playlists, support us on Patreon, and look at our Poll of the Week results, so definitely check those items out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher, which is a bestseller. And of course, I want to remind you guys that you can support us on Patreon. You'll get access to awesome exclusive content while also helping our channel grow and allowing us to put out more GIMP tutorials and more GIMP content. I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here's the photo we'll be using for today's tutorial. This is from Pixabay. As always, it's free. And you can click here to download this. I just went with the 1280 by 853 version. You can use whatever version you want and then just click download right here. So I'll start this tutorial by opening up the original image. So I'll just go to Open Recent and open up that image we downloaded on Pixabay. And to start, I'm going to rename our original layer. So I'm just going to name this Main. And then I want to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to come over here in my Layers panel and click on the Duplicate icon. That'll go ahead and create a Main copy. And this is going to be the layer where we have the caricature. So I'll just type caricature there so we know that that is that layer. And we can just hide our main layer because we don't really need that right now. That's just there for sort of a reference as we work on this. The next thing I want to do is separate the foreground object, which is my main model here, from the background object, which is the backdrop. So to do that, I'm going to use a tool called the Foreground Select tool, and I have an entire tutorial dedicated to this tool. So if you guys want to see an in-depth look at this, just check out that tutorial, which I'll link in the description of this video. So for starters, I'm going to outline, I'm going to create a rough outline around my foreground object, which of course is the model. So I'm just quickly creating this outline. And then I'll connect this to create a closed loop and hit the enter key. And I have my preview color set to red here. You could set it to whatever color you want. And now I have my brush here. And so I'm going to use the brush to just tell uh, our foreground select tool which item is our foreground. And you can release the mouse and then uh, continue painting. And actually I have right now, I'm going to undo that because I have this set to draw background and I need this set to draw foreground. So make sure this is set to draw foreground. It should switch over automatically. In my case, I was messing with this earlier, so it didn't switch over. And you can always tell when it's set to draw foreground because it'll show up as the original image colors after you paint over those areas versus uh, when you're set to draw background, it'll show up as that dark blue color. So let me just increase the size of my brush here for a second just so we can cover more ground. And you guys will also notice I have the engine set to matting 11 over here. And I'll just decrease my stroke width and try to get some of these smaller areas. We don't have to get too precise with this as always, but uh, we do want to get somewhat precise with it. All right, so once we've marked our foreground area, let me just go ahead and hit the Enter key. And now we have our background object separated from the foreground object. Now you can just hit enter again and you can see we've got a rough outline here of our object. And it's not perfect, but I'm going to leave it as is for now. I'm going to right click on the caricature layer and go to add layer mask. And under initialize layer mask 2, I'm going to choose selection and click add. And that's going to mask out the whole background there. And I can hit control shift A to select none. And now here you can see uh, places where this basically missed parts of the background. We want to clean this up as much as possible. So what I can do is make sure I'm clicked on the layer mask and then grab my paintbrush tool here. Click on this icon here to reset your colors to black and white. And then you can hold control and use the mouse wheel to zoom in. And now we could zoom in to parts of our image here and you could see parts that need to be cleaned up. So anything that should not be shown should be painted with black and everything that should be shown should be painted with white. And I've actually got my Wacom tablet here and uh, you guys can still use your mouse if you don't have a tablet. And if you do have a tablet and you don't have it installed yet, I have a tutorial on how to do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint with my uh, paintbrush here using my tablet. And I'm just going to paint anything that needs to be cleaned up. And if you mess up like I kind of did right there, uh, you can either leave it if you're not too concerned with it or you can go back with the white and paint it back in. 
And so I can hit X on my keyboard and that will switch over to my white color and then I can paint anything that needs to be painted back into the image. So any edges you see here that are maybe too faded and need to be brought back a little bit, you can paint those back like uh, on this ribbon, for example. And then I can hit X to switch back over to my black. And I can increase my brush size. And you can increase the size of your brush using the brackets on your keyboard. Or you could come over here and use the size slider. Or in my case, I've got a little uh, wheel on my tablet that allows me to increase or decrease the size of my brush. So I'll clean these areas up here. And then I'll move down the image. And I'll come over here and I'll switch to white and I can paint some of the arm back in here. And that's a little too much, so I'll hit Control Z. Switch back to black, paint some of that back in, or back out, I should say. Let's decrease the size of this. And I'm going to zoom out holding Control and using my mouse wheel. All right, so once you've cleaned up the layer mask, the next thing we're going to do is increase the size of our canvas. And so to do that, I'll go to Image, Canvas Size, and now we have our canvas size here we can adjust. This isn't scaling your image up, it's just scaling the borders of your image. And so I'm going to scale this to 1500 by 1200, that's just what I did uh, the other time I did this tutorial. And now I'm going to center this up so it's on the center of the page. And the last thing I want to do is just move this so that it is all the way at the bottom of our canvas so I can uh, basically push the Y arrow up all the way until it won't go up anymore. So that offset value is 347. And then I'll hit resize. And now that will resize our canvas so there's a lot more room up top here. The reason we do that is because we have to scale the size of her head up to give her that caricature effect. So we need a little bit of extra headroom, no pun intended of course. But the next thing I want to do is add a selection area around our model. So to do that I'm going to right click on the layer mask and go to mask to selection. And now you'll see we have a little selection area here around the model. And now what I want to do is create a path around our model using the selection area. So to do that, I'll come over to our paths. And I'm going to click on this icon right here, which is labeled selection to path. And that is going to turn our selection area into a path. So I'll click on that. And now here you'll see we have a selection area outlining our model. And I can hit Control Shift A to select none. The next thing I want to do is grab the Ken Brewer Path Tool, and this was named after our Diamond member patron on Patreon, Ken Brewer. And I'm going to hold Control and zoom in with the mouse. And what I want to do essentially is I need to outline everything that was not selected by this path we just created so I can unhide this path. And again, here you can see the original path outlining our subject. And so what I need to do is I need to draw with this path tool just along the hairline here. And so I'm just outlining all of the hair, and I'm doing this loosely at first. And I'm just clicking to create nodes, and I'll drag to create handles as well, and those handles allow us to create curves on these paths. And so what I did is I went up here to where the hair intersects with the cheek here, and then I just came back down from there. And then you just want to make sure that this last path goes outside of this path here that's outlining our entire model. And so basically you're going to end up with the shape that goes underneath the uh, jawline and the chin here of our model and then also includes the hair. But what we need to do is we need to zoom in. So hold control and zoom in with the mouse wheel. And the problem right now is that we can't fully see what's going on with the hair because it gets a little bit dark. So what I did is I came over here and I clicked on our layer that has the layer mask and I duplicated it. And then I clicked on that main layer again and went to Colors, Levels. And then I just sort of adjusted the levels here to make the picture brighter. We're not going to keep this, so this is just temporary. But then I need to come back over to my Paths dialog here. And by the way, if you don't have the Paths dialog, you can go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and then choose Paths right here and it should open up somewhere in GIMP, hopefully right here where it normally goes. And so I'll unhide that path so we can see that again. And I'll grab the Ken Brewer Paths tool and I will click on that path. And now what I can do is I can click on each node and move this. And then I can click on the handles here and adjust the curvature of our path that we created here. And I'll hit Control Z. I didn't mean to create a new node there. And so I'll just adjust these handles as we go. 
and adjust it to the hairs that we can now see. If uh, there's a big gap right here, like we missed this entire big piece of hair because it was hidden in the dark, what I can do is I can hover over the path and hold control and that'll allow me to create a new node along the path and then I can move this node and I can create new nodes to encompass that area that we missed originally and make adjustments here. And if you have a node that does not have a curve uh, or does not have handles, and let me try to find one that does not. Uh, well, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is if it doesn't have handles, you can hold control and then click and drag on the node and it'll automatically create handles. And then you can go through and adjust those. So once you've finished drawing the path along the curves of the face and the hair here, what you're gonna wanna do is click on the last node here and then zoom out by holding control and using the mouse wheel. And you're gonna to wanna to finish this path so it goes around the entire head. It doesn't have to be accurate, obviously. It just has to make sure that it encompasses the head. And then hold control, and you'll see a little icon as you hover over this node right here. And that's an icon that tells you that you can create a union between the last node you drew and this node. So by clicking on this, now this node that I drew is connected with this one. And so now we have a path that goes around the entire head of our model here. So I already created this path in my other project. So I'm gonna show you guys how to export a path and then import it into a project such as this one. So I'll come over here to the original composition I was working on and here was that path I created originally. And so I'm gonna right click on this and go to export path and I'll name this under chin and hair. And then I'm going to choose a location where I wanna save this path. So I'll go to photos. And I'm gonna save it in this folder. One thing I noticed is that you have to manually type in .svg for this to properly export. And I'll hit save. And so now that path has been exported from this project and then I can import this into future projects like this one. So I'll right click and go to import path. And now we have that path right here. So under chin and hair and I'll click open. And so that will open up this path I drew earlier. I spent a little more time on this one getting the lines and everything right. So I'm just gonna use this for the remainder of the tutorial. But this is the same thing that I was just showing you guys how to do. So I'll use my zoom tool and zoom in here. So now that you've drawn this path using the Ken Brewer Paths tool and you've made this path out of the selection area, what we wanna do is create selection areas from both of these, but we only wanna keep the intersecting area where her head is. So to do that, I'll click on the selection path and then click on the path to selection icon here in the path dialog. And that'll create a selection again around our path that we drew around the model. And I want this to intersect with this path here. So to do that, I now need to click on the under chin and hair path and then hold control shift and click on that path to selection icon again. And now that will leave only the selection area that intersects with both of those paths. So if I hide both of those paths that we drew, you'll see the selection area only goes around the head. So I'll come back over here to my layers panel and now what I need to do is I need to basically cut the head out of this photo and paste it onto its own layer. So to do that, I'll go back to our original caricature layer and I can hide the copy layer because we don't need that anymore. And I'll right click on here and go to add alpha channel and that will add transparency to this layer. And then I'll hold control X and that will cut out the head of our model here. And I'll hit control shift A to select none. And then I'll hit control alt V to paste this in place or you can go to edit paste in place, and that'll paste the head right back in the same position where we cut it out of. And so that'll put this on a floating selection layer. I'll click to create a new layer, so that'll put this on its own layer, and I'll just name this floating head. So now if we hide our original caricature layer, you'll see her head is now on its own layer. So now I'll unhide both of these layers again, and I'll hold control and use my mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. So next I'm gonna scale this head up a little bit. So to do that, I'll grab the scale tool. I'm gonna to make sure interpolation is set to no halo and clipping is set to adjust. And I'll click on this head here. Make sure this chain link icon is linked. That's gonna ensure that this scales up with the same aspect ratio as the original aspect ratio. And then grab one of the corners and drag it out. And then hold the control key as well and that will ensure that this scales from the center. And then once you have this at the size you want, you can grab the center squares here and then just move this up a little bit so it's aligned on the neck a little bit better. And then once you have it where you want it, just hit the scale button there. All right, so now I'm gonna start using the main tool for this tutorial 
and that is the Warp Transform tool. And this tool is most similar to Photoshop's Liquify tool. This is a very popular tool in Photoshop, so it's pretty cool that GIMP has an equivalent. And to use this, I've got a brush head here, and then I can change the type of warp I wanna perform. So I'm gonna change this to grow area to start, and what I wanna do is first grow the eyes a little bit so she's got some big doe eyes. And so I'm going to decrease my brush a little bit, and all I gotta do is paint on the eyes a little bit and just move my brush back and forth or up and down depending on how I want to uh, warp the item that I'm painting on. So I'm gonna do this until I get the eyes to where I want. And if you don't want them to have as much strength when it's growing the pixels, you can turn that strength down a little bit and that won't perform the grow quite as much. So that gives you a little bit more control. So now she's got these big eyes. And I actually wanna perform the same thing on the lips. So I'll move in on the lips and I'll decrease the size of the brush here and then just use this to try to plump the lips out a little bit. I'll hit Control Z. Sometimes you gotta play around with it a little bit until you get the look you want. And it helps to sort of move your brush in the direction where you want the pixels to grow. So I want these lips to grow outward, so I'm just gonna move my brush in that direction. And I'll zoom out here. So that looks a little bit too warped and distorted to me. So I'm gonna undo that and try that over again. I'm gonna try to not add too much here. And now I'll hold control and zoom out. So that looks a little bit better to me. And I'm gonna hit enter so that it applies that warp there. And that way if we go onto another layer or anything, it won't accidentally erase that warp. So the warp isn't going to apply until you hit that enter key or change to another tool. So just keep that in mind. And now the next thing I wanna do is grow the ears a little bit. So I'm gonna increase the size of my brush and then just paint on the ears. I don't wanna grow them too massively, but I'll just go with that for now. And now what I wanna do is I wanna shrink some pixels in here, so I'm gonna change the type of warp down to shrink area. And I'm gonna increase the size of my brush, and I'm just gonna paint over the nose. And remember, we have the strength turned down a little bit, so it's not going to shrink as much while I paint. So I've shrunk that nose down. I also wanna shrink this bow down a little bit, so I'm gonna come up here, increase the size of my brush. I'll hit Control Z and try to paint inward so that this shrinks in that direction. And I'll decrease my brush size, shrink that down a bit. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to another warp transform type and that is move pixels. So this is going to allow me to just move or shift pixels uh, to another location. And so it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just shifting the pixels of her uh, jawline here inward a little bit. And that's sort of having a similar effect to the shrink area warp transform setting. I'm actually gonna undo those because I don't like the way that's turning out right now. And I'll just increase the brush size a tiny bit. Sometimes it's better to shrink things or move things uh, with one motion or brush stroke. Move that in a little bit and then just move that in. I'll zoom out a little bit holding control and using the mouse wheel and then I'll increase the size of my brush again and I'm just going to move the hair in a little bit. I'll just undo that for a second. So I'm gonna move the hair inwards and then I'll move the top down a little bit just to round it out a little bit more. And then I can also move this bow inward a little bit if I want to uh, shrink it down even more. And I'll hit the enter key to apply that. And so now I wanna perform some warp transformations on the layer below. So I'm gonna click on the caricature layer so I can transform the body here. And I'll just use that move pixels. And let me hit control Z. And I'll move the arm inward a little bit to sort of shrink her body. And then I also want to move the neck outward so it doesn't look like it's kinda of, uh, going inwards diagonally. I wanna straighten it out a little bit. So I'll use that move pixels setting to move that out. All right, so once I'm done with that, I'll hit the enter key and that'll apply our warp transformations. All right, once we've done that real quick, I'm gonna come over to the floating head layer. Right here, I have a piece of her hair that's sort of uh, overlapping with the arm and I wanna get rid of that. So I'll grab my eraser tool and just erase that because we don't need that in here. And I'll just check if there's any other things that are overlapping that shouldn't be there. So maybe parts of this hair here. And we're gonna work on this 
Actually, I am going to increase my brush and just erase that. And I'll zoom out holding control and using the mouse wheel. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna merge these two layers. So I'm gonna click on my floating head layer, right click and go to merge down. And so now we have everything all on one layer and I can show and hide that. And what I need to do is I need to add a layer mask back to this because when we merged the two layers together, it deleted the layer mask and I need to clean up some parts uh, around the outer edges here. So I'm gonna right click on here and go to add layer mask and choose white full opacity and click add. And I'll zoom in here using control on my mouse wheel and I'll switch over to the paintbrush and make sure I have black as my color. And then using my Wacom tablet again, I'm just going to try to paint out these parts of the background that shouldn't be here just to clean this up a little bit. You can always hold the space bar and then use your mouse or your uh, pen to move around the image. All right, so hold control, use the mouse wheel to zoom out again. And the next thing I'm gonna do is create a new layer. And I'll name this layer Fill. And under Fill With, set to Transparency and click OK. And you can use your paintbrush and zoom in here using your mouse wheel and hold control and click on this area right here. And we're gonna click and move this fill layer below that caricature layer. And I'm going to increase the size of my brush using the brackets on my keyboard. And I'm just going to paint behind here. And that will basically fill in those gaps. And these gaps were created when we scaled this head up. So now we've filled in that gap area. And now I'll zoom out again. I'm gonna create another new layer and I'm gonna name this background. And I'll hit the enter key. And I'll move this to the very bottom layer. The only layer that's below that is our original main layer. And now I'll grab the gradient tool and I'm going to set the gradient colors to, uh, right now it's set to foreground and background. So I'll keep this at black and I'm just going to change this from white to like a, a darkish gray color. And so I'll click in the middle and then drag outward. And I have the shape of this set to radial here. I'm gonna flip the gradient so that the colors are flipped around. And I can adjust this and adjust how this gradient uh, basically changes color from that dark gray to the uh, black gray here, or the black here. And so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll hit the enter key. And now the last thing we wanna do is we're gonna use the burn tool to sort of blend in these areas that look a little bit too bright right now. So I'll grab my tablet again and I'm gonna come over here to the Dodge Burn tool. And so right now this is set to burn and you can see all my settings here. I might adjust these settings as I go, but I'm gonna increase the size of my brush. And I'm just going to, actually let me decrease my brush again. I'm just going to paint strokes on here and I'll hit Control Z, make sure you're on the right layer so I'm on my caricature layer. And I'm just going to paint these burn strokes on here and what this is doing is it's basically darkening any of those pixels that I'm painting on and it's allowing this to sort of blend in a little bit better with the shadows so it just looks a little bit more natural and I'll click on this background layer here and there you go. So that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel on Patreon and help us grow. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.